with the World Cup fast approaching, I thought now would be a good time to share some preliminary World Cup predictions. Uh, but keep in mind that they are only preliminary. I will uh, upload a uh, finalized and more in-depth version of my predictions in either October or November. But uh, as I said, I think it's still relevant to and fun to share my current predictions. So let's. I'm gonna simply use the Telegraph's World Cup predictor. Very convenient. Uh, many people have used it before me, but it's popular for a reason. Let's start with Group A, which I think the Netherlands will win, as they are simply the best team in the group, uh, and they had really good Nations League display so far, where they beat Belgium 4-1 away. So I can't really argue with that too much. But the the fight for second place will be most certainly fought between Ecuador and Senegal. Senegal are a bit are a bit better on paper with I mean Koulibaly, Mane of course and uh, Mount Mendy and their African champions. But I, I I don't know why but my gut is saying Ecuador. However, I shouldn't always listen to my gut because it has been wrong in the past. Um Ecuador did really good in well I mean if you qualify from South America you've automatically been good uh, Ecuador finished fourth in CONMEBOL qualifying and here's the thing if Senegal were placed in that position well if they qualified from South America I'm not sure they would reach the competition but then again Ecuador's a lot of the uh, Ecuador were really good early on in qualification but they've since to an extent falling off, fallen off, even though they're still pretty good. Um, but also at the end of the day, yeah, <laughs> you play the World Cup at the World Cup. Uh, how you qualify is uh, irrelevant. So I don't really want to hold that against Senegal too much. It's a bit unfair. They can only fight what's in front of them. Uh, yeah, as I said, my gut is saying Ecuador, but I am actually going to go with my brain here. And... Uh, and the brains of most people and say Senegal. Um, that main tiebreaker is that they're, as I said, better on paper and uh, they have more recent experience at the competition. Uh, Ecuador did qualify in 2014, but I, I doubt many of those players are still around, even though some of them may be. Uh, and by the way, I'm just going to predict the winner and runner up because it's the only thing that affects the outcome of the competition. So we're just going to move on to League B, to League B, to Group B now. I was I had the, the Nations League mindset. Yeah, Group B, I think England will win it, as they're simply the best team in the group, even though they have been in pretty poor form in the Nations League. Well, you could say very poor form, even since they lost 4-0 against Hungary, which is just incredible. But I think they will top this group. Uh, I think it's going to be not convincingly, mind you. I think it's going to be similar to how they did it at the Euros by narrowly winning two matches and drawing one. So I, I think England will have seven points which will be enough to win the group. Uh, the fight for second place is uh, tricky, but I think the United States will clinch it simply because they are have the best squad. Uh, Iran, Iran, I see a lot of people, well, some people uh, lifting Iran as an option because they do have a few good players, but I, I'm not, I don't buy into that. Um, they're coach is uh the 2018 coach is gone i think it was uh the one who carlos queiros if i recall correctly who is solid defensively and that's the, the main reason why iran iran were so tricky in 2018 but i think iran are worse now so i don't think they will finish second place wales uh, did really good to qualify but uh, they are not a one-man team but do i think they would have qualified without gareth bale no uh, United States is simply the second best team in the group. They've got some some good players, simply. So it's no reason to make things more complicated than they have to be. Yeah, Group C, Argentina are sim yeah the best out of the four reigning Copa America champions and several great players, of course. Second place is uh, gonna be fought between Mexico and Poland, unless Saudi Arabia can uh, maximize the use of playing in the desert, which the players should be used to, since. Saudi Arabia is kind of a sandy country but yeah I think uh, I mean if Lewandowski has a good tournament anything can happen I I do think Poland are a bit better on paper than Mexico but Mexico just they just always find a way to 
reached the knockout stage. For example, in 2014, I think they finished, I think maybe fourth or fifth in the CONCACAF hex, but they were still good at the World Cup. So I think Mexico will just get the job done. And Poland, yeah, I mean, they definitely obviously have some good players, and not only Lewandowski, mind you, Piatek is also solid, and Zielinski and whatnot. But uh, Poland have not been convincing. They, they, even though they beat Sweden, that was, I mean, a real, that was, that was just us, well, we, I say I'm Swedish, us being terrible, instead of, as opposed to Poland being good, even though they're, of course, decent. I think Mexico will finish second. Now, let's move on to Group D. D as in Denmark, because I think Denmark will top the group. France is in really poor form at the moment. They, well, in the Nations League, with uh, losses against Denmark, uh, of, yeah, Denmark, which is also in this group, and Croatia. So they're really inconsistent. And then there's also the elephant in the room, which is um, what's known as the Champions Curse. And I, I don't think it's just black magic. I think there is a psychological merits to it. I mean, imagine lifting the World Cup trophy you've spent your entire life as a football player and now you find you've already achieved it now imagine doing it again so i think the champions curse i think it is a fair argument and combined with the fact that france have been in poor form heading into the competition i think means i don't think they will advance from the group stage uh, i just don't even though they have possibly the best squad and squad depth in the entire world but i don't think france will advance as I, I'm, I'm repeating myself this is what happens when i don't script the videos by the way all right so uh tunisia or australia to advance australia have been poor honestly they did good to scrape past peru in qualification but that was nil nil and a penalty shootout and they really were pretty bad in the asian qualifiers so i have to give Tun tunisia an edge here Group E. I see most people, not all, definitely not all, but a majority of people choose Spain to top the group. I don't agree with that. I think Spain are really overrated, actually. Uh, they're obviously not bad, but I see most people hailing them as a real contender to win the title, which I don't agree with at all. They're at the Euros, they only won one match in 90 minutes. And in the Nations League, they've been, they've been decent, but still dropped points against the Czech Republic. I simply, yeah, uh, Germany are better, especially under Hansi Flick now. If Joachim Löw was still in charge, anything, I mean, Spain, Germany could be eliminated the group stage for all we know. Uh, that said, uh, I think uh, Spain will finish second. Yeah, let's move on to group F. Belgium, or um, they've had yeah, <laughs> flop uh, time and again, even though I think people are a bit unfairly harsh of them. Uh, However, they do they always get the job done in the group done in the group stage. So I think they will top group F. They they simply have it in them even though they have been a bit inconsistent by sort of for example by losing against the Netherlands 4-1 in the Nations League. They bounce back magnificently and won 6-1. If if Belgium play at their best, I think they can win the World Cup, but I don't think they will play at the best all the time. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself now. We're still in the group stage, not the knockout stage. Anyways, group uh, the runner up uh, Morocco are, I think they're good. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure about their current state, but I remember they were really good in 2018. I, I would say they were the most un unlucky team at that World Cup, just because uh, they played really well, but only obtained one point. Canada debutants, they topped CONCACAF, but I don't think it will be enough. I, th I think Croatia is the second best of this group. Sure, they have some aging players, but they have good jung bud as well. So this, yeah, Croatia are still good. Group G, uh, Brazil, first place. Nothing controversial there. And uh, yeah, uh, fight for second place between Serbia and Switzerland. Probably uh, unless Cameroon surprises, which I wouldn't count on. Uh, my brain is saying Switzerland. But I, my gut is saying Serbia, so I'm gonna go with Serbia and trust my gut uh, to to make it more more uh, well objective and not just uh, opinionated. I could say that um, I think uh, Switzerland are get better at getting consistent draws, but I think Serbia has a higher chance to record a uh, sort of ex explosive win against Brazil or Switzerland. 
which I think will r r grant them a higher point tally than Switzerland in the end. And they of course have great players like Vlaovic and so on. Group H. Portugal is the best team in this... Well, let me rephrase that. Portugal has the definitely has the best squad in this group. In fact, I argue it's possibly, I mean, top five in the world. But they just fail to come together as a team for some reason. They just do it. They, well, they just, it just, things just doesn't click for them. So, and Uruguay have been in good shape. Uh, to, I mean, two of their biggest stars are aging, but they have some decent young blood as well. And th the fact that they're aging doesn't really matter now, as long as, long as they're still good, which they are. So I think Uruguay, again, uh, Portugal definitely has the better player material, but they just failed to come together as a team. For, for example, they didn't win their World Cup qualification group. And a lot of the games they did won, well, they did win, wasn't as convincing as it should have been. So, yeah. I'm just gonna move on, or else I'm gonna ramble about it forever. Now, on to the knockout stage Netherlands against the United States. Netherlands, nothing complicated there. I don't think it will be a demolition, but it, I suspect it will be a pretty comfortable victory, even though the United States are pretty good. Argentina against Tunisia. Argentina, uh, routine win. England, Senegal. I think it's going to be 1 0 England. Boring game, but I think England will edge it out. Match 52 Denmark against Mexico. Oh boy. Yeah, I think Mexico's five game curse will continue and that Denmark will be victorious since they are a really good team, actually. Germany, Croatia. If this was 2018 Croatia and 2018 Germany, I think Croatia would have won. But uh, we're four years in the future now, and Germany are better. And they, not to mention, they have a great manager in Hansi Flick. All right, Brazil against their former colonial rulers, Portugal. Uh, yeah, Brazil will get poetic justice and win. Uh, well, not just because of that. Uh, Brazil is simply a better team, but again, I, I'm willing to make the argument that Portugal has at least as good players as Brazil, but as I've rambled on about previously, Portugal just failed to come together as a team, and I think uh, Brazil will win. Belgium against Spain. This is a really tricky match. As soon as the groups were drawn and I started making predictions and looking at uh, what the bracket shaped out to be, I had Belgium and Spain in the round of 16, and I'm still a bit on the fence about this, but I think Belgium have uh, one good tournament in them at least, before their golden generations start flopping majorly. Because Spain, I mean, as I previously mentioned about, well, earlier rather, about them dropping points against teams they should be beating. I think Belgium will scrape past them 1-0. And I think that they have this, <coughs> they have this, excuse me, win in them. All right, match 56, Uruguay against Serbia. Honestly, a really tough one, but I have to, I, mean, I have to end this video sometime this year. So I am going to go with Uruguay. Uh, similarly to Belgium, I think Uruguay has at least a good tournament before they enter an awkward transitional period where with Suarez and Cavani retiring, I think Uruguay will win against Serbia. Alright, quarterfinals. Netherlands against Argentina. Uh, a really tough, a really well, tough to predict, but really entertaining to watch. However, I am going to go with Argentina because I think uh, they have more experience, which which is not an opinion. That's an ob objective fact. Argentina has more experience, and the, their squad is a bit better. So Argentina, it is. Now Germany against Brazil. Oof, it's actually really tough. Uh, Hansi Flick is a um, really good manager. They have some good players. However, uh, I think Brazil have a bit more experience now uh, than Germany. So I am going to go with Brazil. England against Denmark. A replay of the Euro semi-final. Uh, England have been in really poor form in the, the Nations League. Denmark have contrastingly been in great form and they have uh, 
experience, a great manager, a great spirit, even though that's a bit superstitious, I think it's true, and uh, quality in the squad. So I think Denmark should be regarded as marginal favorites against England as of now. And I would not, I would not consider this an upset, uh, by the way. And I mean, Southgate is uh, not great, to say the least. Right, match 60, Oof, Belgium against Uruguay. Really tricky. Really, really tricky. But I am going to go with Belgium because they have a bit more squad depth. But this is, is really a toss. And they, yeah, I mean, Belgium simply has a stronger squad. Uh, but even though Uruguay are, yeah, Uruguay are better managed, to be fair. But I think Belgium will get the job done. On to the semi finals Argentina and Brazil. Argentina did beat Brazil in the Copa America final. And uh, not to mention, and one of their fixtures uh, in the the World Cup qualifiers were postponed due to, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get into it, but you know, it's just crazy circumstances. And the fixture that was played finished nil nil, I'm pretty sure. So this is an entirely open fixture. Um, my brain is saying Argentina, but I think Brazil will. I, th I think Brazil will do it. I mean, it's a complete toss up, basically. Anything can happen. Uh, but one thing I will say is that Brazil are kind of they all. I mean, always among the favorites to win the World Cup, but they still haven't made it. Well, they've only made it past the semifinals on one occasion since winning it in 2002, and that was as hosts in 2014, where they have um, well, where they naturally get get quite a favorable route uh, to the latter stages of the knockout stage due to being top seeded. But I think Brazil will reach the final. All right, now the other the other semifinal. Denmark or Belgium I think uh, I think it's gonna go to extra time but I think Belgium will get the job done it's gonna be really close final Brazil versus Belgium Belgium did beat Brazil in 2018 but now I think Brazil will get revenge and win the title uh, when in doubt at World Cup predictions you go with Brazil similarly to Real Madrid I think Brazil would win the final due to having more final experience at the Copa America and also in their more in their DNA so to speak with the winning titles and I think they will secure a narrow win against Belgium. Alright, that's it. Thank you for watching.